The Queensland government has announced a six-month trial of charging just 50 cents for all public transport trips in the state, regardless of trip length, in an ambitious move aimed at getting more commuters off roads and giving cost of living relief more before the October state election. On Sunday, the Premier, Stephen Miles, said the initiative had been something he had wanted to do for a long time before becoming Premier, and had arrived on a 50 cent figure because it was virtually free, but would still require users to tap on, which re was required to collect data on the trial to determine if it was su successful and should be continued. The 50 cent trip trial would come into effect from the 5th of August, and apply to all TransLink public transport services around the state, with the government claiming some regular commuters will stand to save thousands a year in costs. The government estimates the trial will cost $150 million. Customers will still need to tap on and off for their journey using smart ticketing, a go-card, or by buying a paper ticket, in order to access the reduced fare, the government said. These days you can't get much for 50 cents, but you'll soon but soon you'll be able to go anywhere on our public transport network, Miles said at a press conference while holding up a 50 cent piece. This is all about getting cars off the road, easing congestion, making it easier to get around the southeast as well as our provincial cities and addressing the cost of living. For people who already catch public transport, this could save them thousands, but for people who don't and decide to catch public transport, it could save them even more. Think of all those savings on petrol, on car parking, on time stuck in a car when you could instead be reading a book or listening to a podcast. Miles noted that public transport ridership remains about 13% below pre-COVID levels and hoped the trial would help restore patronage. He also touted a disinflationary effect as he said it would help to lower both transport CPI and inflation in Queensland for the second half of the year. Miles gave the example of someone catching the train to work in Brisbane from Mango Hill where he made the announcement on Sunday. He said it costs up to $96 a week currently, but from August, the same trip from Mango Hill to the city and back would only cost $5 for the whole week. That's nearly $9 back in your pocket every week. And if you drive to work, you're stuck in peak hour traffic every day and paying a lot more than that, Miles said. The Transport Minister, Bart Millish, said that for someone in his portfolio, this, that, this is like winning State of Origin, winning a Grand Final and winning a Grand Slam all in the same day. Transport experts have said the reduced fares will overwhelmingly benefit people who already can't catch public transport, who are more likely to live in wealthier areas with better transport services. The chair of Queensland's Transport Ac Academic Partnership, Professor Mark Hickman, said the trial was a great opportunity to find out how sensitive commuters really were to fares and if lower prices would get people out of cars. It's been well known that South East Queensland has some of the highest public transport fares relatively in the world, he said. But he questioned whether the trial was the best use of Queensland money instead of providing more extensive services in other parts of the network. Jeffrey Clinton, a transport academic at the University of Sydney, welcomed the trial but said people needed good quality services. Because reducing the first fares isn't going to change people's minds if they don't use public transport because it doesn't get them where they need to go. Terry Lee Williams, a transport planning veteran and the director of future transport at Ericon, said Brisbane had a very low patronage on public transport and he wasn't sure the plan would get many people to switch from driving. Have they done the research to show it's the price and not the service that is driving the behaviour that they're seeking? He said, public transport actually needs more money so that it can provide better services. Independent transport expert Marion Terrell said reduced fares were a good way to encourage people to try public transport and reduce congestion on roads. But she said fares generally only covered about 25% of a public transport network's operating costs. Nothing is actually free, she said. Someone has to pay. Taxpayers are subsidising travellers.